Nope. Hey guys, it's Jim with uh, Motorhome Rehab Ranch and Co-op Motorworks on Patreon. And we're going to do a mechanical evaluation. What this is supposed to do is to look at all the mechanical aspects of this motorhome that just came in. Good looking motorhome, but we need to look at it mechanically. There's been 45 years of good intentions in there. I can already see a few things that we're going we're gonna to probably take out. Our intention is to make it reliable with countermeasures, okay? So mechanical review is a written A, B, C, D, E condition of five pages of things. Uh, uh, compression tests, we look at brakes, fuel system, radiator, electrical system, batteries, everything. This gives us a picture mechanically of what this thing is. So from there we can write all that down, look at what we think that's going to cost and come up with a budget of some sort as to what it's going to take this motorhome to be a reliable vehicle. Now all of them are different. Again, it's been 45 years. Some of them have had new motors, some of them have had you know, new bearings, who knows? Some of them still have steel fuel tanks that, with rotted hoses we just don't know it runs i've seen these things run broke so we need to find out what the problem is what things are in here that need that are problems and uh, identify them so that's what we're going to do here the guys are here to learn about it we're going to go through this one at a time one piece so they see what's going on and uh like you to uh come with us all right so that's what we'll be doing Okay guys, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check the front end. Front end is what really takes a lot of the beating um, uh, and it can be very expensive. So the first thing we wanna do, we wanna jack the front end up with the jack in the center. And you wanna put a jack stand right under two rows of bolts just behind the front wheel. You want this off the ground, okay? Now. First thing is the front wheel bearings. Now, don't believe what you read in the manual. They're not weak. Okay, you don't have to change them automatically. But if there's a problem, you've got to go in there. So the first thing you want to do to check the wheel bearing. Jack the coach up, grab the wheel at the top and the bottom, and pull in and out. No movement. If there's any movement, it's either going to be the wheel bearing or it's going to be the lower ball joint. So what you do, if it had movement, then I'd stuff one of these guys up under there. Tell me which one's moving. There's no movement. Hard as a rock. That's great. All right. Next thing is side to side. Now you're going to have some movement there because that's the steering. Okay. I don't think you can hear it, but there is a knock. Very small knock. That's probably the uh, real lever, but we'll check that in just a second. That's pretty tight. I mean, if you move it back and forth and you hear clunk, 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 you got to find where that's at. Okay? So, we think that that's going to be okay. <clears throat> the bearings, at least. Now, to change the bearings, you'd have to take the knuckle <laughs> off the coach. That's a couple hours. You have to take the hub and knuckle assembly on a bench and separate it and change, find out what the problem is. That's about another hour. Then it takes another two hours to put all that crap back together. So if you say, well, I just want to change the bearings. Five hours worth of labor. Bearings are 175 and more. It's a problem. Now, if you find, I saw on Facebook, some guy pulled his wheel off and his rotor was looked like it looks like it was the surface of the moon <laughs> to turn the rotor you have to separate the bearing I would go after that with a with a wheel <laughs> okay so the front wheel bearing is very important and it can be very expensive now the way you drive this motorhome you drive it 250 miles you stop go pee come on go around and touch each hub right here 
The front two hubs will be the warmest because it's got brakes and drive and all that. But they'll be the same. The next two wheels will be the next warm, but they'll be the same. The back two lift when you hit the brakes, so they're going to be the, the coolest, but they'll both be the same. So if you check this one and it feels good to go, you check that one as hot as a firecracker, we got something going on. Okay? You need to know that every 250 miles. If what I'm going to say to this thing, front bearings are good in that one, go drive it and see if it gets warm. Okay? So that's how it goes. All right, who wants to get greasy? Oh, front row. Yeah, you're going to need a light. Okay, this is Ricky. Say hey to everybody. Hello. This is Ricky. Okay, go on under there. Go dive her down. So now what we're going to do is on the tie rods, on the ball joints, on anything that moves, you want to take your thumb and forefinger, put it between that joint. And if it moves anything other than what you think it should, like if it goes up and down, or it goes like this, or you hear a knock, we got to know that. All right? So here we go. Okay. Tie rods are good. Okay. How about there's a relay lever. Come off the gearbox. Yep. This drag link. Come right off the gearbox is a drag link. Watch the drag link. Is there any movement in those two points? That one feels good there too? Okay, new bushings. What do the uh, sway bar bushings look like? Okay, they're good? Okay. Now, all right, stay under there. I need a bar, like a breaker bar or a long bar of some kind. A bar. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this under the wheel and I'm going to lift it. What we're looking at are the ball joints. You want to see if the ball joints are sitting in a socket they've worn and they move up and down. Ready? Yeah. There's a little bit of movement. Just a hair on the bottom. A little bit. A little bit's okay. A little bit more is a problem. The uh, ball joints, lower ball joints, are about a hundred bucks about an hour and a half to two hours to change them. Uh, when you do change the ball joints, you want to ping the threads. In other words, you want to destroy the threads because if you bolt them in, they will unbolt. Not maybe, not possibly, they will unbolt. So you kill the threads. So this side's okay. All right, let's move to the other side. Okay, you ready? Well, Gonza's decided to help us on this one. I'm not sure how much help she's going to be, but uh, all right, move up. Come on, come on, baby. There you go. Good girl. All right, here we go. Up to down. Ooh, a little movement. Okay, what you do is take your light, look right in where the drive shaft goes into the knuckle. Okay, so this this hub knuckle assembly has movement uh, we uh, need to go in it this one we're going to have to put the labor in and pull it apart i noticed that this wheel this coach has uh, the wheel spacers you probably heard of those to, to line the back wheel up with the front wheel uh, how do i put this that's ridiculous don't do that it overloads the bearing it spaces the tire out, it overloads the bearing, and uh, when the bearing starts to go, it goes fast. It's supposed to stop from riding ruts on a ruddy road. All right. So you have a brand new Toyota, and you're riding a ruddy road. What do you do? You get in the other lane, right? Why do you think a 45-year-old, 26-foot-long car is going to do better? Get in the other lane. 
doesn't fix it to line the wheels up. This could have actually exacerbated this wheel bearing. So we're going to have to pull the wheel bearing. All right, let's go side to side. And what he's doing is putting his thumb and forefinger between every joint. How about that idler arm? There's a, there's a, okay, watch that one. There's a small dog bone shaped thing up there, the idler arm that holds the cross member. That's the third weakest part in the suspension. I'll tell you about the other two. That's good? All right, bonus. All right, shocks in here look rather um, crusty. Might want to call a Smithsonian on those. Um, the, the, the shock, okay, so it needs shocks. The biggest thing on, on a shock, they may still have gas in them, they may still not be leaking oil or anything, but if the bushings in the ends go bad, they don't give you new bushings, that's an indicator that the shock's too old. It's kind of like, time to get another one. So that's what we'll do. All right, come on out of there. What I do with my rag? Oh well. Okay. Remember I told you about the three weakest parts, right? Here's the weakest part. Come on, come on, Eleganza, come with me. There you go. Don't eat the cord. <clears throat> weakest part is in here. This is the steering shaft. From the steering column, there's a there's a CV joint with a rubber boot on it. It goes down to a slip shaft, then it goes down to a universal, and then it goes into the gearbox. You can see it right there? This piece right here is the weakest part in the system. Okay, go unlock the, the, uh, the steering wheel. So what we're gonna do, the first test, there's a bearing right in here, it's called a collar bearing. little bit of noise, not too bad. It, you can probably hear it. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to call that a B or a C. The steering boot down here is, has been replaced. That's good because the, the boot has a CV joint in it. And if, if water gets in there and the balls in that CV get rusty, your steering wheel locks up. It's a really good thing to not have that happen. You know what I mean? So that's very important. The slip shaft down here will tell you if there's any play. You twist it. Okay, there's not much play in it. It feels pretty good. Now here's one that everybody misses. You say you got play in the wheel. Down at the bottom, going into the gearbox, is a collar bolt. It's like this and it's got a bolt going through it, okay? Now, the meat going around here is huge. For this bolt to pull that in tight on the uh, splines is really hard. We break grade eight bolts with an impact trying to make this thing tight enough. And if it's not tight enough, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to lift up on it. If it moves in the spline, not tight enough. If I can do this, not tight enough. So here we go. Pretty tight. Okay, good deal. All right, that one's tight. There's my rag. Stay there. Ugh. I can't work with dirty fingers. So the weakest part in this system is good. The second weakest part in the system was the relay lever. That goes from the gearbox to the steering. And he said that was good third weakest part again we talked about was the idler arm on that side a little dog bone it was good so I have to say other than a front wheel bearing on this side and a pair of shocks uh, the front end looks pretty good now somebody says my motorhome's all over the road I can't drive it over 60 it's just crazy I don't understand they must not do that no they do do that okay the two things if the alignment is right and of all the parts are doing what they're supposed to do, this vehicle bone stock will go down the highway at 70 miles an hour 
with correction two fingers on the wheel. Guarantee it. You don't have to throw stuff against the wall. You don't have to put any of those funky things that you see on the internet. You don't have to do any of that. And this thing will drive well. Okay, so just get that out of your mind. So if something's wrong, go back to basics and fix it. All right, this is the mechanical evaluation on the front end, on the steering and on the front suspension. We're going to go to the back. I'm going to show you what we do in the back, okay? One other, <clears throat> you want it? One other thing on the front end, and uh, Ricky reminded me, uh, are the drive shafts, the CV boots. Ricky, come over here and show us what you found here. The outer CV boot has to turn. Uh, it really has to do a lot of things. See how that's ripped? Is that a multi-convoluted boot or a single boot? Okay. That boot is a crap boot. Okay. It doesn't have enough ability to twist and eventually it tears. The boots that we use have multi-convolutions where they'll move, they'll move uh, much easier, much, much better. So we're going to need to change the boot here. My suggestion is change the boot on both sides because if one's got age, the other one does too. The boots are, are not much money, I think 20 bucks or something like that. Uh, but if that CV goes out, then we have a big problem because they're not, they're irreplaceable. Precision no longer makes that outer CV. So we need to really take care of those and we're going to change those outer CV boots. Now the inner CV boots almost never move. They're just holding it like straight. Okay. I would tell you 10 to 1 on replacing those boots. Uh, we'll look in there. If they're not cracked and they're in good shape, we're going to leave those alone because there's needle bearings and all kinds of things in there. We'll regrease it when we have the drive shaft out, but we're going to leave that alone. Okay, thank you, Ricky, for reminding me about that. And now we're going to go to the back. 